On April 11, 1970, the crew of Apollo 13 launched from the Kennedy Space Center. Their destination, the Frau Morrow region of the moon. They would never arrive, however. 13, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like you to uh, stir up your cryo tanks. Okay. Okay, Houston, uh, Houston. we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. During the third day of their outward bound journey from Earth, an explosion on board the spacecraft prevented the command module's fuel cells from creating the electrical power needed to sustain the vehicle's operation. With no electrical power available, the crew of Apollo 13 would eventually abandon the command module and take up residence in the lunar module for most of the remainder of their journey. With three people living aboard a vehicle designed to accommodate only two, the lunar module was quickly filling with the carbon dioxide the three men were exhaling. Test director Jim LeBlanc describes what happened in the moments following the explosion. The substance managers who were responsible for the subsystems were, were racking their brains, looking at the data, trying to find out what they really need to worry about. It became pretty clear pretty early that lithium oxide was going to be a very limiting factor. The crew was soon running low on the round lithium hydroxide filters used to scrub the air of the carbon dioxide accumulating inside the lunar module. Without the filters, the crew would soon succumb to carbon dioxide poisoning. Because no one was living on board the command module, there was little need to scrub its air of carbon dioxide. There were plenty of lithium hydroxide filters available, therefore, from the command module. The only problem? Those filters were square, while the lunar modules were round. NASA was literally faced with the dilemma of putting a square peg into a round hole. A team from the Crew Systems Division was quickly assembled to solve this puzzle. Once again, Jim LeBlanc. When we heard about the problem, initially it was just an explosion. We didn't know what, what the end result was, what the real problem was. Our policy was when uh, there was a mission up, we had our chambers in a uh, already standby position. And what that means is we had them all, all the systems checked out. We had all the consumables, oxygen, nitrogen, all the uh, supplies we needed, lithium and dioxide. In fact, we had that standing by. Another member of the assembled team was Tom Wilkes. Wilkes came to work at NASA's Manned Spacecraft Center in 1964 as a logistics technician. He was promoted to altitude test technician in 1966. By the time of the Apollo 13 mission, Wilkes also served as a rescue technician and volunteer test subject. He picks up the story of the development and testing of the device conceived to help save the crew of Apollo 13. We were given a list of what we could use to build an adapter to fit the Apollo Command Module lithium hydroxide canisters to the uh, LEM environmental control system to scrub or take out the carbon dioxide that was being breathed by the now three crewmen and their lifeboat on the way home. The items on the list included a flight manual cover, duct tape, two suit hoses, two socks, bungee cord, and plastic bags. So what we did is we put this together all in a three-hour time and got it ready for testing. Hours after being handed a list of items, Ed Smiley, chief of the crew systems division, his assistant Jim Coriel, and a handful of engineers and test directors had rigged a life-saving device. As the altitude test technician, it was now Wilkes' job to test the device in condition mimicking those aboard the Apollo 13 lunar module. Wilkes recounts what he did next. We started running checklists for the 11-foot chamber. The LEM ECS system was there, and it was identical to the one on the moon and on the way home that they used. The 11-foot chamber was a vacuum chamber containing a high-fidelity operational lunar module cabin complete with an environmental control system, or ECS, exactly like the one aboard the Apollo 13 lunar module. Test director Jim LeBlanc next remembers how the testing proceeded. We had the capability of injecting CO2 into the chamber at a fixed rate. And the fixed rate, in this case, would be the metabolic rate of these three people. 
the astronauts were calibrated before flight. So uh, their metabolic rate versus CO2 output, output was done. The test established the effectiveness of the newly developed filtration system. Soon, mission controllers radio to the crew instructions on how to assemble the device. Within 30 minutes of its completion, carbon dioxide fell to safe levels aboard the spacecraft. The problem had been successfully resolved. For their efforts, the team from the Crew Systems Division received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1970. 35 years later, the team was again recognized, this time presented with Global Specs Great Moments in Engineering Award for the development of the lithium hydroxide filtration system.